How Niger has turned the Sahara Desert into a farmland. Being the third largest desert in the world, smaller only than the deserts of Antarctica and Northern Arctic, much of the Sahara Desert covers large parts of Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Niger, Western Sahara, Sudan, and Tunisia. It covers 9 million square kilometers, amounting to 31% of Africa. It is estimated that if all areas with a mean annual precipitation of less than 250 millimeters were included, the Sahara would be 11 million square kilometers. Niger is the second largest landlocked country in West Africa and a unitary state bordered by Libya to the northeast, Chad to the east, Nigeria to the south, Benin and Burkina Faso to the southwest, Mali to the west, and Algeria to the northwest. The predominantly Muslim population of over 22 million have been battling with desert conditions, insurgency, and decades of political instability. Niger has long struggled to feed its rapidly growing population, as it's amongst the least developed countries in the world. But recent efforts by the country has begun rapidly bearing fruit and may even be a model for the Northern African region. You're welcome to this informative channel where we present interesting facts from around the world. If you're new here, please pause and subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications in order not to miss on any of our subsequent videos. So then, let's get into this. The Previous Condition of Niger's Sahara Desert Crisis According to researchers, the landlocked country of Niger on the southern fringe of the Sahara had accrued a regional trend of losing agricultural land to the desert, and with the country's population booming continually, that would amount to a worse situation, given that Niger has the highest birth control, with women giving birth to at least 8 children on average. Desertification is mainly caused by human activities and climatic variations. It occurs because dry land ecosystems, which cover over one-third of the world's land area, are extremely vulnerable to overexploitation and inappropriate land use. Actually, there are over 250 million people worldwide, from Mongolia in Asia to the southern tip of Africa, who are directly affected by the desertification according to the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification. The aid NGO Oxfam UK has warned that climatic changes could put 60 million Africans at risk of hunger by the 2080s, and a large portion of these Africans will be those living in the desert zones, such as Niger, Egypt, and Algeria, to name a few. Current State of Affairs Due to the efforts of Niger's Prime Minister, Hama Amadou, who had already announced his contest to the presidency in the 2009 elections, large-scale irrigation and ranching projects were favored as a solution to the country's grave economic problems, as well as rapid desertification. Increased investment in irrigation featured strongly in the 2006 budget and has been backed by the current president, Mohamed Bazoum. To this end, independent experts agree that the results of the anti-desertification campaign have been impressive. Using simple techniques, such as planting trees and preserving natural vegetation, teams of workers have already rehabilitated 3 million hectares of severely degraded land, according to the Nigerian government. The government launched the second phase of Hama Amadou's 2009 campaign, targeting 1,530 hectares of dunes, which threatened to bury valleys and roads. The plan would give work to more than 60,000 people in the cash-strapped country, as officials said, while a total of 750 hectares of sand dunes had already been improved. The government plans to restore a further 15,000 hectares of degraded lands and 1,500 hectares of oasis water for a total of $2.8 million each year. The second major factor has been better conservation and improved rainfall, 
which has led to at least 7.4 million newly tree-covered acres in Niger, which researchers have found, achieved largely apart from the large-scale planting of trees or other expensive methods advocated by the government. Recent studies of vegetation patterns based on detailed satellite images and on the ground inventories of trees have found that Niger has recently added millions of new trees and is now far greener than it was 30 years ago. Impressive results Niger is a perfect example of what national policies can achieve for reforestation. Patches of lands have already been restored and more is coming. The director of the Niger's Environment Ministry, Laminu Atau, said, As at now, the tree planting project has taken on a political aspect in Niger, as it is backed by the country's president. Niger's farmers are also enthusiastic about the development. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, estimates that production of onions, an important cash crop produced in southern regions of the country and sold in neighboring Nigeria and Benin, has tripled in the last 20 years, reaching 270,000 tons in 2005. Farmers have diversified their revenues and are now in control of their financial situation. One of the major results that has transformed Niger's side of the Sahara Desert into a seemingly farmland is the use of an ancient technique by expert farmers, which involves digging half-moon-shaped trenches to allow rain to soak into the soil during the wet season instead of running off the hard-backed surface. The simple technique has helped to restore land that was once fertile but had been degraded by erosion, deforestation, overgrazing, and climate change. Since 2015, nearly 20,000 hectares of agricultural and pastoral land have been restored in this way with the help of the UN, which has also provided farmers with better seeds and built markets to make it easier for them to sell their produce. The impact is said to have been transformative. Villagers say malnutrition has but disappeared and school attendance in the village and surrounding areas has more than doubled. The head of the World Food Program, one of the UN agencies running the project, said Niger could be a model for all of Africa if this scheme and others like it were rolled out across the country. Major concerns continue. While the gains are impressive on paper and have brought much needed relief to some, researchers are skeptical that halting desertification can do much to correct Niger's poverty-related problems. The country still suffers from much economic and political setbacks, the Sahara Desert plaguing a good portion of the country's resource potentials. However, the current state of affairs are very promising for the country of Niger and one can but cross fingers and expect a rapid consistent development in all vital sectors of the economy. It's quite impressive and heartwarming for the continent of Africa that one of her least developed countries has found a way to turn back the encroaching threats of the desert. It's left for the Economy and Human Development Indexes in the nation to follow a similar trend. That brings us to the end of this video. If you found it informative, please do not forget to subscribe, share the video with your friends, and share your thoughts in the comments section below.